that was got rid of, and the CIA restored the shop. Then he was the usual <coughs> Okay, now, in 1963, Kennedy talked the shop into having reforms in Iran. Yes, and he stabilized Iran because of what Kennedy did. Uh, with uh, Iran and stabilized it, was stable for the next 10 years. Kennedy was not stupid. He didn't want the day. Hey, well, next week we'll discuss his assassination. Uh, but anyway, he stabilized Iran in 63, the same year they bought him off. Uh, 1968, Nixon inherits the collapse of the gold reserves and Vietnam which caused it, um, but then they went into the lie. Oil was peaking, so now we have to grab everybody's oil. Now, that was the first lie. This is, this is the word of <clears throat> This planet has oil, but the oil could last thousands of years. We have that much oil on this planet. So these people, they don't even need to be useless. There needs to be no war over oil. At all. There's lots of oil for everybody. That's the crime. In fact, there shouldn't be any wars to get oil. We should get rid of oil, but the same people who are making the wars and the money on the oil are the ones that are hiding, hiding other forms where we wouldn't need the oil. Now, I can list it down here. Here, this is the one I wrote on corporations versus the human race. Here. The biggest perpetrator is the oil cartel. They have been keeping clean energy locked up as long as they can make money. They have bribed, threatened, murdered our God in here to keep these technologies hidden, okay? And they knew a long time ago, yes they did, as we do now, there are engines that can run on water, Alcohol, we know about that. Even garbage. There are carburetors that can get hundreds of miles on a gallon. The internal combustion engine has been obsolete for 50 years. And I'm quoting experts here. In fact, there was an electric car on the market just before Ford got his assembly line. So that was taken off. We didn't have to suffer all these years of pollution and cancers at all. No. We were forced way back when to just use oil. And now they want us to make war over oil so that we can kill ourselves even quicker. This is a stupid, stupid planet. I'm sorry. Greed and stupidity is a winning combo. And, uh, and there are magnetic engines that can run forever. Magnetic engines, yes. I went to the seminar. So instead, you have oil cartels, and you have this paper. They have destroyed the water we drink, the air we breathe, and now they want. And here's another crime. There's no nuclear reactors uh, that are made with thorium. Why? Thorium is safe. Thorium does not create weapons-grade uranium, okay? But they don't do nuclear plants using thorium. They thought about it and they said no. We want nuclear plants that do create weapons grade. They make a fortune selling that depleted uranium. All of this stuff that they're killing us with is completely unnecessary. Completely. If you use thorium, you will not have a nuclear plant that is uh, a weapon. You won't. And they know they have all this oil, and now they're fighting about the pipeline 
where it's going. And more or less, the people in the states have objected, and they've said, and now Alberta is saying, oh well, uh, we'll take it somewhere else. There's no need for it. There's no need to go down into oceans to get oil. They have capped off more oil. There's more capped off oil in America, in Alaska, you name it, and they're capping it off over there as well. This is a crime against humanity. And the reason we have to obey all these murderers is that these people run them and they're in favor of it all. And they're in favor of depopulation. And they're making a fortune doing it. And wars are part of that. So, so to get back to Iran, they wanted Iran for at least 50 years that I know of. And it's, it's really sad because, uh, you know, I was in the Middle East, but that was way back in, what, 1960, 59-60. And what's her name? Agatha Christie was married to a very famous archaeologist, Sir Max Malouin. And Iraq used to be the most wonderful place. I mean, they were writing checks. The oil wasn't expensive. Everybody was getting along. She went there with her husband on the dig every year with her husband and wrote a lot of novels while he was out on the dig. And it was just a wonderful place to go. When I was in the Middle East, it was the same. Before all this. And the Persians, as for the Persians, and uh, they want Iran, and they're uh, putting all these people down. But don't forget the Persians. We use their mathematics today. That's Persia. The philosophers, uh, what's his name, uh, the famous one, I have his book, uh, you know, The Moving Finger Rights and Having Rip Moves On, or All Your Piety or Whip Can Lure It Back to Cancel Half a Line, Omar Khayyam. Oh, yeah. This was Persian, it was a civilization. And now they're going to go in there and do the same as they did to Iraq, everybody dying of cancers, and in Iraq, and uh, did say a few days ago, in Iraq, there's not one child there that can look forward to living to the age of five. <laughs> not one. That's what they're planning for Iran. Uh, the whole Middle East is covered in DU. They love it. It causes untold suffering. It doesn't kill quickly. Their own soldiers are coming home devastated and giving uh, this thing to their wives because uh, the plutonium, uh, the uranium goes right through your system. It's even in the male semen. So the wife uh, gets it, the children. Then they bring things back to the states that have the DU on them. <coughs> that's low enough for these people. And they are not. They know exactly what they are doing. Exactly. And now they want Iran. Why? Because you've got your map there. Put a map on one of these. Iran is an exact straight line from the Caspian Sea. A straight line for a pipeline. Nothing in the way. That's why they've always wanted Iran. Uh, it's coming next. In fact, they had Saddam when they were buddy, everybody they've used, they've thrown away and betrayed. So when Saddam was their good buddy, they talked to him into trying to conquer Iran. Eight years, a million dead, Saddam couldn't do it. Oh. We better get rid of him then. But he said, I'm not going to privatize the oil. Ooh. I'm not, I might go to the EU money. Ooh. So he had to go. And if you think they found him on the day they sat in that deep hole 
no. uh, was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, please. No, they had him months before that, and they put him through. Trust me, and that's why he looked the way he did. And that's what they do when they use people. They always betray them. They always kill them off uh, when they know too much. So now. Uh, Iran is on the horizon, and they know bloody well they cannot uh, put soldiers in there and win. There's no way. There's no way. That's why I put, uh, where's that picture I have? Um, why I put that picture on the door when you came in. Just take a look at this. This is from Time Magazine. Does that guy look like he's going to wait for U.S. soldiers in there? And do you think the U.S. soldiers, if they're going to think for a minute, they're going to meet this guy hand in hand combat? No. They will not. No, no, no. They have to bomb, bomb with DU. They have to make sure, like they did with Iraq, Iraq was bombed for 10 years. Ten years steadily every day. No American knew that. And then when the country was nothing but dying and cancer-ridden people, then these brave Americans, they went in there. Now that's what they will do with the red. Do these people look like they eat at McDonald's? Come on. That's what's waiting for them in Iran. They're not going to do that with foot soldiers. They are going to clear that country just like they did Iraq. They are going to carpet bomb that into nothing so they can walk on streets filled with dead. They wouldn't dare send an army in there. And neither would the Israelis because they're too used to killing defenseless Palestinians. And they lost in Lebanon because the Lebanese were not prisoners who couldn't go anywhere and didn't have decent food and nothing. And that even Lebanon surprised them. So it's going to be bombs. And I'm asking, how much more depleted uranium are we going to suck up? It's going around the world. It doesn't stay there. The world turns. And whatever goes down over there eventually comes down on us. And that's what's going to be coming soon, okay? And that's why nobody in the news is going to even discuss it, okay? Uh, so, oh, and the Canadian government, oh, okay, yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, there's some sheets down here. Uh, the one about, can we, can we join the war in Iraq? Look what we did. We had our... Tom comes here and then races off to another meeting I got, yeah, yeah. So, here are all the facts. Yes, we joined the Iraq war, not officially, but we did. And the Carlisle, this is about all the payouts. The whole White House now is run by weapons, weapons at Corpos. People from Carlisle, people from, these are all people who make weapons. They're running the White House. And this in Canada, here are all the companies that are making money. I'm telling you, this is all, this has nothing to do with legal justice, nothing. It's to do with grabbing other people's resources, making, shutting all the money you can make, never caring about how many, even on your own, you're killing them. That's insanity, I'm sorry. That is insanity. And the most insane thing of all is that these kids that go into the army, they're all usually between 18 and 24. They pick them at that age because their reflexes will never be as fast again. Never. And they pick them at that age because their hormones are going. Come on. So what they do, they channel the libido right into killing. They take the libido, the normal libido, and they channel that with medications, with propaganda, into killing. And 
And those people that go to war, these uh, guys, basically, they don't even get to live long enough to pass on their genes. Now, how insane is that? Animals, uh, when they die, get picked off it's because they're old or weak or sick. In the animal world, uh, the really uh, number one, uh, the ones uh, that are most healthy and young, they don't get killed. It's the old, the weak, and the sick. Like the Eskimo grandmother who used to put herself out on the ice floe uh, when the baby was born, okay? Even they realized that. But not with human beings, no. We get the fittest, the youngest, <coughs> uh, the brightest, whatever. Uh, they're poor. They have no jobs, so we put them in the army, and they don't get to pass on their genes. Isn't that smart? So that's why they can say that each generation that used to be smarter than their parents are now not so smart as their parents, and the second thing, they're not going to live as long. Well, of course they aren't. Because look at what's coming down on us. And they won't even tell you, like the other night I was listening about, the, I call it fuck you, Shima. Uh, but they don't even let people know that it's only in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you're young and you have no ties, or anybody, if you want to get the hell out of this cancer uh, calamity that's coming, go live somewhere south of the equator. Wherever the hell it is, you're not going to get this fallout that we've been getting since the Fukushima. You're not going to get that. You have a better chance of staying alive and maybe having children. So if you're young, you should just get the hell out. And on top of that, the DU. And on top of that, the pound trails. <coughs> Depopulation <coughs> is the fact. Okay? This course would be called Methods in Depopulation. Easily. Because everything is about that, and everything is about, it all gets back to these. Are they people? I don't know. But it all gets back to that. In the beginning, it gets back to that. Because if you, if you print no money for any country, you also print the news. You have complete control on the media. It's nothing but propaganda. Nobody ever analyzes it. You don't read the odd paper, the, the odd alternate paper. So, now let's get back to why Iran now, it's been planned for over 50 years, okay? They want their oil, they want the pipeline straight down, and they want everybody out of the way there, okay? And, not only that, now this is the clincher, this is the clincher. In order that these people who own the Federal Reserve, all these things, the octopus, and make all the trade agreements, in order that the world doesn't catch on and every country do what it used to do, even monarchs have the right to make their own money, issue their own money, no interest on it. Before that happens and they lose out, they're trying to prop that dollar up with every bit of oil they can grab on the earth. But it's really, it's, their dollars now are petrodollars. So if people were to rise up and say, you know what? I'm not buying anything anymore that's made of petroleum. I'm not buying the carpets. There's thousands of things that are made with oil. I'm going to use alcohol in my engine because uh, I know half of my uh, engine, my half of my gas tank can be alcohol, and I'm cutting down on every other product that's petroleum. If I look at it and it's made of petroleum, I'm not getting it. This dollar is gone tomorrow. All we have to base it on is their myth that oil is scarce. Therefore, basing their money on oil, like that gold is useless, the gold standard, nobody believes in that. Keynes was right about that. So if everybody realizes all at once, you know what? This oil is killing us. I'm going to keep to such a uh, 
small bit of oil, maybe a little bit in my car until I get an electric car, but mostly I'll get alcohol from my garbage, which people are doing in the States, and I'm going to take away all the backing of this phony dollar. And this would sink like a stone. So if everybody just said, well, I'm sorry, the oil is killing us and I'm not going to a war for oil, neither are my kids, and if they don't have enough jobs, then they can start something else. You know, I don't give a damn what it is. It won't have anything to do with oil. It's all coming out of this octopus here that's sitting on top of this planet. And so people have to get together and say, well, you're lying. The goddamn stuff is killing us. It's not worth anything. I don't want money that comes from oil that's killing me and that my kids are going to war and dying for this crap that's killing us all. No. That's what we have to do. I'm sorry. We have to do it. And our government is one of the worst. You'll get the papers down there. Uh, so they've signed everything. Uh, so what else is going on? So poor old Nixon, he gets all this, well, Kissinger ruined him. Kissinger, Nixon wasn't running the country. Kissinger was running the country. And so he's the first one, the first genius that went around to all the other countries and he said, you know what? We'll cap all our oil. You know there was a lot. We'll cap our oil. And we'll buy yours, but in return, you have to accept our Federal Reserve dollars. So Kissinger went to every country and made that deal, okay? Most of them took it. So the oil prices jumped, and, uh, and then, of course, the Brzezinski in 78, he got the Soviet into Afghanistan. 79, the Shah was overthrown, and... Uh, and then, of course, they talked Saddam into making war on Iran. Didn't turn out. So they've always wanted Iran. And Israel has big plans for Iranian oil, trust me. So, so the causes, the causes here that I worked out of the so-called Muslim hatred, I think they're too busy staying alive to use up their energy on all this so-called hate they have. Number one is the agony of Palestine. <clears throat> that was the cruelest thing. So now we have to get back, we have to get back to this again. How the hell uh, did that happen, okay? Oh, here we are. Now this is what happened. When the First World War was over, uh, during the First World War, Hitler actually in 1916 had won. He had won that war. I mean, England only had food for a week, the whole country. The French were defecting. The Russians uh, didn't want to do anything anymore. Uh, and so England was left with practically nothing. And right in uh, 1916, Hitler said, you know what, why don't we just call it off? Why don't we have a negotiated peace? No reparations, we, we just go back to the way we were. And so England was considering that in 1916. And then the Zionists, Zionists from Germany, went to England and said, to Balfour and that crowd. You know what? We can get the Americans into this war. We know we can. We'll have them with you. You'll win, but we want Palestine. Well, did England have any right to give away any other country? Don't think so. It's the only time it ever happened on the globe. I mean, I don't know, and I don't think it'll ever happen again. But that's what the Zionists from Germany said to England. And the sad thing was that in 1905, when they had the first Russian, and it was a failed revolution, it failed 
And all the Jews in Russia came to Germany. And they were treated very well. And at the time of the First War, they had huge corporations and shipping lines and banks and you name it. Yes, but the Zionists uh, came to England and said, this is what we'll do, but we want Palestine, and England agreed. Then they went back to the U.S., they blackmailed Wilson, because he was having an affair at the time. <laughs> Wilson, the moron that led in the Fed, okay? We're talking, the Fed came in in 1913, that's what started all the wars. So they went and they uh, did that. And Balfour, which was, I forget now what he was minister of, but anyway, that's a famous letter and I have it in my files. So they said to, to Rothschild, a letter directly to Rothschild, the guy at the top, he says, look, you owe me big time, I'm sending in my markers. I want Palestine. And you'll win the war against Hitler, <coughs> not Hitler at that point, but against Germany, because they still had a lot better trade. So they agreed to that. But England had no right to do that. And the other sad thing is that at the same time in the First World War, Lawrence of Arabia, you've all seen the movie, Lawrence was a young archaeologist, and the Arabs liked him and they trusted him. And so the Arabs fought the Turks on the side of England in that war. And they were led by Lawrence. What a betrayal! And what do the Arabs get for fighting against the Turks for England? They get Palestine turned over to Rothschild. You'll never hear this in a history class. And Lawrence was so upset and disgusted because they trusted him. He gave the English a real uh, talking down, gave them hell when he went back home. And to make it stick, he even changed his name. He left London, he moved to the country, he changed his name because of the disgust he felt that people knew he was involved with that kind of a betrayal. And shortly after he moved to the country, he was found dead beside his motorcycle. And Lawrence was an expert with motorcycles. He could practically make one, he rode one all the time. Nobody else was involved in a so-called accident. He was just dead there by the motorcycle. This is real history we're talking here. This is real history. So that was the First World War. So America did come into it, the Lusitania, 1915. That was not just a pleasure boat. It had all kinds of weapons and things on it. And the German U-boats, Germany sent notices over to every paper right through the states and they warned Americans don't get on the Lusitania because she's coming through our waters and there'll be U-boats. What did they do? There was one newspaper that put that ad in as a warning and that was a little paper in Des Moines, Iowa. No other paper carried that warning to the Americans. They wanted a, they wanted a false flag operation. That's practically what it was. They wanted Americans dead to get everybody enthusiastic about the war. Churchill knew what they were doing. They sat in the war room and they had the information and they watched it go right into the waters of the German subs. do not care about their citizens at all. Whoever believes that is living in Disney World. You have to wake up or you will pay the price. 
he will not live very long, or he will be uh, condemned to uh, the life of a snail. He will learn nothing, know nothing, be working at some job you bloody hate, and you'll be told that you have to have a job, or it's not, you can't, shouldn't be alive. You have to have a job. So that was the First World War. And then, this is even funnier, uh, when they uh, did the boycott on uh, Hitler in the Second World War, first of all, they said, I just love this, first of all, they said, okay, he's not going to get any oil, gasoline. Uh, the Germans invented synthetic gasoline, the way they went. Then they said, we're not giving them any rubber either. They invented synthetic rubber. On they went. So it took practically the whole damn world to stop the Germans because they were so damn good at inventing these things. And the states, of course, knew this because when they won, what did they do? They wouldn't have had a space program if they had to move on ground into the states. On ground, then they had all the MK Ultra stuff was got that from the Germans. The U.S. is a hoot. A good after, before the Zionists went to England, the situation in the United States was they were deciding would their official language be German. They loved the Germans. The Germans were all over the states. Decent citizens. Would our language be German? We don't know. Debating that. All of a sudden, the Zionists go to England. They go to the States, they blackmail Wilson, and all of a sudden, the newspapers were full of the Germans were, like they did with Iraq. Remember the babies thrown out of the incubators? Remember that tale uh, that was uh, told by some little girl from the Nolan Agency, whatever? Oh, yeah, I saw them throw the babies out of the incubators. Another big lie. So it's been like that all along. But that's what happened. From the debating whether German would be their official language, they went to the hatred. Hatred of the Germans were this and that, they were doing this and that, and the big boycott, of course. <coughs> so, so then, the big thing, and Keynes, and we're back to money again, Keynes told everybody at the Versailles Conference in 1919, and they were all bankers. The whole conference, there was about 17 private bankers at that Versailles conference, and Keynes was there as well. And he was, well, probably the best economist who ever lived, aside from Douglas. <coughs> and uh, he was at the conference. And they said, I forget how many millions of pounds of gold the Germans owed the bankers, they said. You might have the figures, Karen. But it was an impossible debt to be repaid. They just got through repaying it last year. Yeah, last year. Was they just got through paying it last year. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Germans were literally starving. All right? And Keynes was at this conference and he said to all the bankers, because they knew who he was. And he, he said, Do you know that you have just set up the Second World War by doing this to those people? He said, They will be starving in the streets. He told them that. They didn't pay any attention. They want revenge, revenge. Uh, and then they kill ants with cannons, as you know. Uh, one Palestinian does something, then a hundred more, a few hundred suffer. So that's how it is. So they didn't listen to him. Then, of course, Hitler being one of the people in the trenches in the First World War, but he was jailed or whatever. Uh, of course, I'm not saying he was a wonderful man. I'm saying that for the time uh, before uh, everything blew up in his face, he realized what he had to do to stop German starving. So right away, he started issuing as soon as he was elected. 33, I think that was. And as I said, Churchill sent him a letter congratulating him and saying, uh, for when he had started everything back up again, and it was wonderful. In four years, Germany was like the power of Europe again. The Audubon, Volkswagen, everybody had homes. It was amazing. And why? 
There was no depth. No depth. Why? Because Hitler uh, was issuing German money from straight from the government, no banker middleman, no interest on the new money. And that's what kings used to do. That's what Lincoln did. That's what Andrew Jackson did. He knew all that. So he started issuing it, and within four years, people all had homes, lots of food, jobs. They were working, they were constructing, they were doing all the infrastructure they needed. Because, of course, there was nothing when they were starving. So now that upset a certain group again. Oh my God. So Churchill goes, all right, this time we're going to fix those Germans. Because uh, they were losing trade. The whole thing was a trade war. A trade war. They were losing <coughs> the trade to the Germans, okay? And uh, they lost Hitler in 1916. All uh, the subs, the German subs, had got rid of all the British convoys off the ocean. The German subs were doing away with all this. So the England, the England yeah, was desperate. So then the Zionists move in. So after the First World War, after this big conference, the Germans get together and they say, wait a minute, all these Zionist people, they came here from Russia in 1905. What? We didn't discriminate against them. They have huge businesses here. Uh, we treated them very well. Why did they go and betray us? Why did they get America in here when we would have had a peace, a negotiated peace, no bombings? Why would they do that to us when we treated them so well? Which they had. So that uh, got a lot of resentment going. <laughs> then, uh, so Hitler came in, issued the money. Now, another funny thing was, just before the Second World War that they planned, because it was a trade war, two other countries were doing the same as Hitler. Italy and Japan were both issuing their money free of interest, their new money, okay? Those three countries, what a coincidence that they were all drawn into this war. So, so they got the Balfour letter, okay? So this is what happens when, and this will happen still today, when there's a war, okay? I'll just give you a list. The scares, when they have wars over oil, the oil, then they say, okay, the oil is scarce, it's not moving. Prices go up. In a war, the oil prices go up. The oil fields are occupied. Resistance shuts them down. Oh, and by the way, all those oil fields that were burnt in Iraq, the Iraqis didn't do that. They said they did, but they were not done by the Iraqis. Okay, they were done by the CIA. All the burning of the oil fields, okay? And the weapons dealers, they love it because they sell to everyone. The banks love it because they lend to everyone, okay? And uh, even their enemies. Israel sold to Iran and Iraq during the war. Once the dam went into Iraq, Israel sold arms, whatever, to both of them, okay? It's business. Business. You play the game and uh, you buy from us, okay? It's part of the game. And of course, all the renewal contracts in Iraq now, that's what I call urban renewal. You bomb for urban renewal. That's free demolition. The bombs are free demolition, then Bechtel, Halliburton, Carlisle, they all go in and they rebuild like they rebuilt in Japan and Germany. That's what the bombs do. It's business. It's urban renewal, okay? War and urban renewal. And of course, uh, this time, if they go into Iran, uh, Israel will get the oil, the water, and the West Bank uh, because nobody will be backing the Hezbollah, as Iran will be flattened. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. And the stock market will soar. Okay? Because 
stock market will soar. And of course, the big thing, the invaders always write the history. The winners, the invaders, write the history of the war. That's their propaganda. Their kids grow up reading that. Everybody else reads it. So in both world wars, the destruction of Germany's trade was the reason for both world wars. And it accomplished that, OK? Uh, and as I said, uh, the failed revolution. Then there was Versailles. Uh, uh, Poland wanted the war with Germany, yes. And of course, while the first, now, OK, the First World War went from, what, uh, 14 to 18, OK? But in between there was a magic year, 1917, the so-called Bolshevik Revolution, which ended up killing millions, they, the Wall Street decided so that, and you never hear about this. When you hear about the two wars, nobody talks about the atrocities that were committed under the Bolshevik Revolution. Nobody. They wedged it in there, that was the sandwich. Nobody noticed that between those uh, years. They put that in there. And if you want to hear about atrocities, <coughs> go there and get books on that. Like there have been Russian writers who have written a lot about what went on in the so-called Bolshevik Revolution. How many million were killed there. So, uh, and of course the amusing thing is that Karl Marx, whose name was Mordecai Levy, by the way. Karl Marx, while well, he wrote his book, Das Kapital, he was supported by the biggest industrialist angles. Owned all these factories in England. He was supported. His best pal was supported his nine kids while he wrote his massive tome. Was a big capitalist. Owned all these factories. They were buddy buddy. And so then the Wall Street backed this because they needed that for the next coming. Once the Second World War was over, the Soviets, and that's why the war was prolonged. The Soviets had all that land. <coughs> and that's what it was done for. But that's why they wedged it in there. Nobody even notices that that happened anymore. Nobody ever talks about it. Nobody discusses the atrocities.